It wasn't long ago that here in Australia, we relied predominantly on coal power generation to charge our electric cars, to charge, to plug in our fridges, to just give us enough electricity. But that's been changing very, very quickly. And as a result, billions and billions of dollars are going to be lost from the investments into coal, which now will be shut down up to a decade earlier than was originally planned. This is what happens, right? This is what happens when renewable energy becomes cheaper and fossil fuels become more expensive. They basically just price themselves out of existence, renewables replace them, and then coal power plants get shut down and never turned on ever again. Am I being hyperbolic? Absolutely not. You should see what's going on in Australia. It might make you, well, it might make you smile. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. My name's Sam Evans. I'm coming to you from Melbourne in Australia. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. If you're new to the channel, we've done more than two and a half thousand videos over the past, well, I don't know, just over a year and a half since we started this channel. And it's been an exciting and very enjoyable trip. It's been a lot of hard work, to tell you the truth, a lot of late nights, but that's how it goes when you want to do something, when you want to really achieve something, you just got to put in, you got to put the work in. Now, if you want to join our Facebook group, I'll put a link in the description below. I want to say a big thank you to our Patreon supporters and also to our YouTube members. Thank you so much for what you do. Victoria's three remaining coal-fired power plants are likely to close years earlier than expected after the government here in Victoria announced a $1 billion plan to ramp up renewable energy and become an active competitor in the state's electricity market. The government has promised that unreliable, expensive, privatized coal will be replaced by clean, government-owned renewable energy. I wonder how those private coal companies feel about that. Well, to be honest, to be fair, the writing has been on the wall now for more than a decade. They had to have been thinking it was going to come, but I think it's just come a lot faster than they thought it would. And I've said on this channel, one of the first videos I made on this channel was about this, predicting this would happen. I think it was all pretty obvious, a lot of you predicted it as well, that billions of dollars would be lost very soon to these coal companies. Now remember these coal power stations, they've got to run at minimum 75% capacity in order to actually make a profit. And in fact, they haven't been doing that for the last few years. So a lot of money is being lost. Those power stations won't be for profit, Andrew said. It's about building offshore wind not building offshore profits. So the government's saying it's going to basically run these new offshore wind farms, new power plant, new solar plants, new batteries. They're putting, installing massive batteries around all around Victoria and run them at a, no cost to consumers. It's just going to be a matter of what they pay for themselves. That'll be the cost of energy. That's pretty cool. Under the plan, Labor are spending $1 billion to create 4.5 gigawatts of energy from wind and solar projects. Hori is also accelerating its emissions targets. The state is now aiming to cut emissions by 80% compared to 2005 levels by 2035 and to net zero by 2045. That's five years earlier than planned. The plan is the public here in Victoria will own a 51% stake in the various renewable energy projects run by the Revive Commission with a balance of the investment from like-minded entities such as industry super funds. Now, the same exact thing is happening in the biggest, well, the most populous state in Australia, New South Wales. New South Wales is preparing for faster coal closures and supply chain bottlenecks for renewables. Reneweconomy.com.au says that New South Wales authorities say they are preparing for a potential faster closure of the state's remaining coal generators over the coming decade as well as global supply chain issues that could delay the infrastructure needed to replace them. The New South Wales government has adopted a renewable infrastructure roadmap and a series of auctions and tenders that have now been adopted as a blueprint for the rest of the country as it takes on the task of building enough wind, solar and storage to replace its aging and dirty fossil fuel capacity. New South Wales has the biggest coal fleet in the country at more than 10 gigawatts, and with the exception of Queensland, is the state most dependent on coal for its electricity supplies. That's about to change though. Queensland has vowed to shut all of its state-owned coal generators by 2035, 
We're modeling three scenarios, said Andrew Kingsmill, the head of technical advisory services at Energy Company, which is managing the rollout of five renewable energy zones in the state. Only one scenario is allied with the step change scenario in the Australian Energy Market Operators Integrated System Plan, which assumed an 82% share of renewables in Australia's main grid by 2030. It could be even more than that. I'm predicting 85%. This scenario aligns with a faster coal closure because there's potential for that and we will need to plan for that happening. New South Wales has embarked on the first of its planned series of tenders, seeking around 1,000 megawatts of wind and solar capacity and 600 megawatts of long duration storage. At least another two tenders will be held in 2023, including access rights to its first REZ in central West Orana and for more renewable generation to accompany the Waratah super battery that will be located on the site of an already shuttered coal-fired power station at Memora. This super battery is actually pretty damn super. The Southern Hemisphere's largest network battery will be built at the site of the old Lake Memora power station, which of course was a fossil fuel power station. The Waratah super battery will be the biggest network battery anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere providing at least 700 megawatts of standby network capacity to the grid. Now it's planned that that'll actually increase in size to 1,200 megawatts. It's gonna be one of the biggest batteries in the world. This battery will act as a giant shock absorber for the grid and allow more renewables into the major load centers after the closure of the Iria Ring coal plant in 2025. So what does all of this mean? Well, it means that very likely, in fact, not very likely, it's, it's, a, it's a done deal. By 2035, every coal power plant in Australia will have shut down. In fact, by 2035, all of Australia's energy will come from renewables, 100%. And when you charge your EV, well, you can either charge it with your own solar panels, or you can simply charge it with renewable energy from the grid. To me, that's the best of both worlds. I love it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.